Hello Vikings and welcome back to another episode here on the Valheim Guide. This is episode 8, I believe. It'll be in the title, you guys will know. <laughs> but today we're talking all about the Swamp Guide. So we're going to do a full preparation of what you need to do before you go to the swamp, how you can actually find a swamp and then what to do while you're there, as well as some best practices and some options of course available to you as I do like to encourage people to play this game however they enjoy best. We're going to look at all of that today, so let's jump straight into it. Okay, first things first guys, let's talk about food. Food is always a very important one wherever you're going to do exploring in this game especially for a new biome now the foods that i recommend are these three foods here so we have the mincemeat sauce the deer stew and also the carrot soup now you might want to change this around a little bit depending on what foods you have available to you in the game and the resources and stuff like that but let's just have a quick look at these so first of all the carrot soup well i did a big carrot farm in a previous episode so i've got lots of carrots and i've got lots of mushrooms that i've picked up along the way and a stamina of 45 with a health of 15 is really fantastic for one food item at this stage of the game. Then the deer stew we have here is sort of the opposite. It gives a health of 45, stamina of 15, and again, just a bit of cooked deer meat, the carrots that we have tons of, and blueberries we've picked a lot up of. So those two there are kind of very easy to make, and the mincemeat sauce is even easier again in a way, because it just requires boar meat and nectar. So three kind of easy things to do. You see the main priority here really is giving us a lot of health, because going to the swamp biome is going to be a little bit tricky in terms of the health that you're going to need. And to that end, we can also talk a little bit about mead but first i just want to say about some alternate foods so for example the queen's jam is not bad you see there are stamina of 40 and a health of 14 and it only requires raspberries and blueberries so this is quite a nice alternative to the carrot soup it's not as good of course but it is an alternative option if you're low on carrots because that is three per time um, other than that i would say that you know anything you, you start to sacrifice health and, and stamina on is a little bit dodgy but one thing you can do is back it up with the meads so let's talk about the minor healing because before you go to swamp you won't have this one this is medium healing but it requires blood bags we're going to look at that later on in this episode so minor healing guys is honey blueberries, raspberries, and dandelion. You should have plenty of that by now, and uh, this will then give you a healing boost when you most need it. So the meads, basically, you make up a mead in here, and then when you've got the mead, you take it over to your fermenter. Now, the fermenter does need to be undercover. It's basically like uh, a normal sort of workstation. And you see here that right now this is fermenting, but when it's done, it will say done on it, and you press E to tap it all out, and it will all pour out in front of you. So this brings me on to the next mead, and that is poison mead, poison resistance mead. So you can see here, I've made quite a lot of these up, and you should too. I'd recommend taking at least six with you. Each one of these will give you 10 minutes of poison resistance. So if you've got six, you've got an hour's worth of running around the swamp, which is possibly uh, you know what you'll need in order to uh, have enough. So in terms of the poison resistance mead, you can see what it requires here. Again, nothing you shouldn't have at this stage. You simply bring the materials to your cauldron, you hit craft, then you take the mead and put it in your fermenter. So I do recommend that you consider taking uh, as many meads as you can with you. Uh, stamina mead is also not too difficult to make if you can be bothered to make that up. But yeah, definitely a good idea because the swamp is a little bit tricky. Uh, just a quick side note as well about the mead, guys. When you make up one mead in the uh, cauldron and then you put it into the fermenter, when you tap it, you'll see here I've got three poison mead on me. If I use the tap right now to get the uh, one batch of poison mead out, you'll see that you get six more. So basically one mead made in the cauldron will give you six of the poison resistance potions. So just worth uh, bearing that in mind that you do get six for each one. I will be streaming Valheim often on both YouTube and Twitch. The Twitch link is in my video description. If you want to keep posted on all my YouTube streams and also all my videos and stuff, then please do subscribe for more. Now, just as a tip, when you're waiting for things to ferment in your fermenters, or if you're waiting for things to grow in your farms, like in our carrot farm down here, for example, and you're sort of waiting around for those resources before you go to the swamp, what you want to do is make sure you sleep as soon as possible each day, because when you sleep, things will Will still happen and you might have experienced this with your smelters before if you put things in the smelter and then you sleep you come back and instantly all of it has been smelted which is very useful so that is a useful tip to speed up your production of materials and resources okay so now let's talk about weapons for the swamp and in my opinion the very best weapon to make is this right here the bronze mace now you can go ahead and upgrade it if you want uh, i'm going to keep mine at level one because when it comes to weapons and armor and stuff like that i like to go straight from the sort of pre-bronze age to iron and just do the minimum amount of bronze in between. Um, the only thing I have upgraded heavily though is my bronze buckler and later on you're going to see how useful that can be during combat. So I recommend that you take the bronze mace and make it whatever level you want. It will largely depend on you know how many resources you've got already with copper, tin, bronze, all that sort of stuff. I recommend you take the buckler because you can parry enemies and again we'll see this later but it is very useful in combat to help you out. Uh, also though you might want to take with you the bone shield as a bit of a backup because if you get involved with a lot of enemies at one time this is going to give you 
you the extra protection and that can be very useful so again this will depend a bit on play styles and things you might want to take both you might want to take just one but i do heavily recommend taking a shield that parries because it is going to be quite useful later on then the next thing is to take the best bow you have available to you and i quite like to use the fire arrows but again you can take the best arrows you have available to you at the time fire arrows i think are pretty good for the damage they do versus like the resources that they take but definitely you want a ranged weapon i would say it's pretty essential to have one when you're first entering that swamp biome so now armor you can see here this is all the armor i took with me i sort of did a bit of a stream yesterday where we went and did a bit of a recon mission to find the swamp and stuff like that to speed up today's video and this was all i took this basic troll armor what i like about this is it gives you the uh, extra sneak ability if you want to sneak enemies which can be very useful to get a good hit on them and uh, kill them before they even see you and also it doesn't have any movement reduction speed like the bronze armor does again though this might depend on your playstyle, guys uh, so i like to go straight from troll to iron armor but you may want to do bronze armor and that is totally fine i'm just saying i wouldn't necessarily say it's like essential before you go to swamp but what i would recommend is you make a full set so right here i'm missing a cloak i should make up a cloak and use that and you know use the full extent that i have available to me um but yeah you by no means like have to have bronze armor but i would say watch later on in this video when i get to the swamp see how difficult you think you're going to find it and it will depend on what you like to do in the game how good you are at combat and that kind of thing some other things to take with you guys one is i would have a portal set up for your swamp so I actually need to rename this and because uh, I'm sort of reusing this one at the moment. But have a portal set up and take with you materials to make a new portal when you get there, as well as some wood to make a protected area. Again, I'll show you this later on, but I do highly recommend that because then if you die, you can portal back. And also, if you just need to get back there very quickly, then you have that option available to you. A couple of final points. Number one, have Ithra ready and uh, available to use. Number two, make sure you sleep and get the full rest of buff, plus set off in the morning. You do not want to land at the swamp when it comes to night times. The mobs there are lots uh, more dangerous. And also, there be a lot more of them so yeah not not a good plan the final thing to talk about is you might also want to take with you some sort of pickaxe uh, the reason for this is because you can use your pickaxe to get chitin from a leviathan if you see one now i do have a guide on my channel on this uh, if you guys want to search that it's not really what today's video is all about but what i will do is put text on screen right now to let you know the lowest level of pickaxe you can take with you to get chitin because i forgot so i'm going to let you know that and uh, you basically don't want to take anything too good with you because you might lose it at sea if you see a serpent and as we talk about how you find a swamp which is the next thing to talk about after this uh, then you'll see that we are going to need to sail almost always you'll need to sail to find a swamp and uh, so serpents are a bit of an issue or at least they can be one final thought guys you might want to make a chest with like backup stuff putting backup food armor weapons whatever so if you die you can quickly reload and go back through your portal to try and get your death point that's an optional one but that's the final thing i wanted to mention in terms of preparation and next we're going to talk about how you can actually find a swamp so let's talk about finding a swamp guys and uh, what you're going to need to do is is make yourself up one of these things right here, which is a carve. So you see that it does require the 80 bronze nails, 30 fine wood, uh, 10 deer hide, 20 resin. So that's the materials you need, but that's what you're going to want to make up. Then in terms of where you want to go, well, you can see here, I just kind of sailed off in a pretty much straight direction and got quite lucky and found a swamp. But although this was lucky, if I just scroll out a bit from this map, um, it's not like as lucky as you might think, because basically from this radius here that I'm drawing with my little uh, arrow on screen right now, in fact, you know what, I'll put up a little circle on screen. That'll make it a little bit easier for you guys but that sort of radius that you're seeing in that circle that's like roughly where you're going to find swamps in conjunction with your starter island so what i recommend you do is sail out about that far and then just start circling your starter island in search of the swamp the reason being is then you're doing a circle perimeter centered on your base and you'll find one as close to your base as you can i mean it might not be the closest because without doing like a reveal all of the map you're not gonna be able to head to maybe the exact best location in the world but that is how i recommend you do it to sail off and do that now on my go uh, channel i do have guides on sailing and also sea serpents so if you want to check those out guys if you're a bit worried about the serpent then do check them out have a look before you head off um, but the best thing to do is just make sure you've got some sort of ranged weapon on you so if you do encounter a serpent you're at least able to fight it somehow and also for your first ever reconnaissance mission you just want to take the bare essentials do not take anything you might be worried about losing so literally you just want to sail across with like a ranged weapon some sort of weapon for when you get to the swamp to fight mobs up close and the materials that you need to set up a safe portal for a return via the portal when you need to. So we're now going to talk about what you do when you see a swamp biome, which is characterized by those big spindly trees that you see right there. So the best thing to do, guys, is just not sail straight up to it. Just recognize that there's a swamp there and have a look and see if there's something nearby. You can see there's a black forest biome there characterized by those trees, right? The big pine trees. Now you can see these from quite a distance and obviously it's much safer to land in the black forest biome than to go straight into the swamp biome. So when you get nearby, just be careful and do not get too close to the swamp 
because the wraiths can uh, fly out from the swamp and attack you on your boat and kill you. Um, also, uh, you could get hit by any archers. You get dragon archers and skeleton archers in the swamp, and they can shoot out at you. Uh, the other thing to say as well is make sure you're not anywhere near a planes, right? If you see a planes nearby, you definitely don't want to be going over and landing at the planes because death skeeters will come out and kill you, and yeah, it's just a bad time. Especially at this stage of the game, you're almost definitely going to die. So we're looking for the safer biome, and I was lucky enough to find one, and often you will find that there is a safer biome adjacent to the swamp when you find it so we've got this black forest biome and what we're going to do is then go and land there now if you cannot find a safer biome you have no choice but to go straight into the swamp and try to find an area that doesn't have too many mobs and then get there and land now whether you found the safe biome next to it or you're going to do this in the swamp the next process is basically the same so what you do is find an area with as few mobs as possible when you're sailing up to it you can see there's not too many around so yep that's a good location you want to go there and then it's about getting yourself uh, a portal set up now one thing you can do is use the map to set up exactly where you are ahead of time so see how i, I misspelled boat because i was doing it quickly but you can mark where your boat is and mark where your portal is so you know where those locations are just in case the worst happens so as soon as you land what you want to do is kill any mobs in the area and then it's all about making up your portal so you see here i've made up a portal and i named it and protected it and i did it in that order and that is the best chance you have of getting yourself back here if anything does go wrong um, and then once it's all set up you can see that in here you only need a small area with a little bit of wood right and that's all set up and i can come back any time that i want then and i am nice and safe so once that's set up you can go home get regenerate your rest above sleep and all of that good stuff and you can see here my health and stamina by the way if i just sprint around you can see where my stamina bar is at right there right it goes up maxes out at like what 121 and uh, i've got health there maxed out i think it maxed out around 125 or something but that's like roughly what you're looking at with this food options that i recommend so it's pretty decent and it uh, should be quite useful to you okay so now we're going to take a look at some of the things we can experience while we're in the swamp so just to say before we go off looking for these crypts you want to make sure you eat all of your food and take a poison resistance mead and we're going to go fully geared for this because we are going to be uh, going through the swamp quite a lot looking for the crypts and it is a very dangerous place plus we do of course have our portal so we can get back here quickly if we need to so to that end uh, some of the things i've got on me include a uh, healing mead obviously my different shields good armor good food all that sort of stuff and we got ike thirst we're going to use our ike through ability for while we are running through got my uh, mace and my buckler on my back ready for a quick uh, use with r of course and now we're going to go and have a little explore okay so this is what a crypt looks like guys we're actually seeing it from the back and they're much easier to spot from the front because of these green torches now green torches do not always mean a crypt but they are a very good indication of them and if you see this structure then this is of course a crypt now you see here the uh, door is actually open because i'm not shooting this in order uh, but i do come on to exploring crypts later on in this video and we will talk fully about that uh, now over here so we've got ourselves a dragger so let's go have a look at that these are a very common mob we're going to see, and uh, there's a Dragger Archer. Now, just to say, you can now parry Dragger Archers uh, and just ranged enemies in general. There we go, we parried him. So after the update, they changed it where you couldn't parry them, but they have since changed it back. So parrying them is definitely useful. However, in the swamp, you'll have things like these crypt structures and other structures, and you'll also have trees. So one thing you can do is just like hide behind trees, use that as shield, and then come out and shoot at the enemies. Looks like there's an enemy over there. This structure here is an abandoned house, which is where wraiths can spawn in the swamp at any time of day or night. Uh, wraiths can also spawn anywhere in the swamp at night time. And it's worth mentioning that wraiths are probably the most difficult mob you will come across in the swamp. Now over here guys we have a geyser. Now uh, you see here these are certainly mobs. Here we go and they're going to shoot at you. Now uh, certainly mobs they are weak to water so if you can get them into the water then that's always a good thing. You see here though I'm just one hitting them. Uh, or this is a two star I'm not going to one hit him but I one hit the uh, normal one. Uh, with just a bronze mace now you can see here they do do damage to you but again a lot of that damage is fire damage and there is a lot of water in the swamp that you yourself can get into uh, in order to protect yourself and they will drop certain cores now on my channel i have a video of a really easy uh certain farm you can make guys and you can actually farm those certain mobs to get yourself tons of the cores so if you're interested in that as i say it's on my channel do check it out now one thing to say guys when you're going through the swamp you really want to conserve your stamina and not sprint too much or jump too much you want to save your stamina so that if you get into trouble you've got stamina to fight with and also to retreat with if you need to run away from the fight so do be very careful conserve your stamina and uh, use it when you need it most all right guys this thing over here is an oozer now the way i recommend you fight these is to actually range them first they're not super weak to range and it's going to take a lot of hits to uh you know get them to well i say die when they die they actually turn into a couple of blobs and that's why they're quite a dangerous mob um but 
if you uh, go up to them, they can do quite a lot of damage to you, and they'll also poison you and stuff like that. So, yeah, I do recommend that what we're going to do is we're just going to use our bow on these and keep our distance. Wait till they land, and it's a much easier shot, by the way, um, and then just get out of their way. And so you can see what I'm doing here, just avoiding them. One thing to mention is when you get into a battle with a mob, do keep an eye on your surroundings. Make sure there's no other mobs around. Um, it can be very tempting to just be focusing on the mob that you're fighting. But then if you get sideswiped by a different mob, uh, it can do a lot of damage, particularly if you're very unlucky and a, a drag or elite comes and sneaks up on you or something like that. So do always be aware of your surroundings. But yeah, these are the user and uh, this is how I like to fight them until they turn into blobs. Okay, there we go. So we turn into the blobs. Now the blobs, uh, I like to melee because they are weak to the mace and we've got the mace on us. So what we're going to do, there we go, when they jump, as soon as they land, I'm going to go in and fight them. Now, unfortunately, they landed on top of me right then, which is highly unlikely and I got pretty unlucky there. But as you can see, we took some damage but we did uh, destroy them pretty quickly. Now, while we've got so many leeches here, I will show you guys, if you run into the water and you want to fight these guys, you can do it that way. And you see we killed them, but we did take some poison damage. So the bow and arrow is just the safest way to make sure you're not going to get any damage. But uh, once you're more comfortable, you can go and melee them too. Now, in front of us here, you see another green torch. And this is an example of a green torch that is not, in fact, a crypt. And you see there's a drag over there as well. These structures will often have spawners in them, um, and they will spawn dragger. So they can be dangerous places, and probably at this stage of the game are best to be avoided until you've got better weapon and armor and that sort of stuff. Okay, guys, up there we have a wraith. They are pretty terrifying. Now, if you see it first, the best thing to do is try and get the first hit on it. So I'm going to get my bow at full here, and boom, we hit it, we did. But now it knows where we are, and it's going to come at us. And boom, okay, it, it died in that shot. So that was very, very good and very lucky. Um, now, that's why seeing them first can be very, very useful. So if you are in a swamp at night, guys, keep your eyes to the skies. And the reason you want to kill them is because they give you chains. So long term, we actually want to go and hunt these things for decoration and stuff like that. But at this stage of the game, really our best bet is to avoid them. Now, there I showed you how to melee one uh, from a distance when you see it first. That's pretty much the perfect scenario. Uh, what I'm going to do is keep going around until I find another wraith and show you some other scenarios that you will encounter. Okay. Hey guys there is a wraith just up here can you see him there we go hopefully you can see this on camera you're gonna see him because we're gonna get pretty close to him let me show you what happens guys if you don't sneak him in the perfect way like i did before so come on wraithy let's be having you so here he is he's coming at us they are pretty scary to be honest and he's gonna come in and have a go at us and boom there we go so these are difficult if you try to parry them you can actually parry them if you get it right um, but I would say just be very careful about not trying to hit him too many times once you've parried him. Because if we parry him, we want to just hit him and make sure that he doesn't hit us, okay? When you're fighting Wraiths, guys, it's all about them not hitting you. That That's it. I mean, obviously, yes, you need to damage them. But the huge priority there is on not letting them hit you. And uh, they do do massive damage when they do. But as you can see there, you can melee them. You can stagger them. Um, and you can also fight them from a distance with a bow, which is by far my preferred option. But always uh, not always possible in practice, of course. Another thing to say, guys, is keep an eye on your food. As soon as your food starts flashing, you want to make sure that you eat it. And as soon as you're out of the poison resistance mead, make sure you drink another one and make sure you don't get stranded if you're down to your last poison mead it's time to start heading back to that portal and stay around there until that 10 minutes is up because if you get stranded and you get poison it, there's a much higher chance you're going to die another thing to say guys is you will die in the swamp okay it happened to us all myself included you will die several times probably when you're new to the game don't let it discourage you too much guys in today's video what i'm trying to do is get you as you know forewarned and, and as best prepared as you can possibly be to die as few times as possible but i still expect that number to be like greater than one right so you are going to die and don't let it discourage you guys keep going and once you get like to know the swamp a bit better and stuff you guys will be experts in no time now up ahead of us guys is a structure you want to be very wary of when you're new to the swamp area guys this is a spawner uh, area and you can see here you've got a couple of different spawners in here it will spawn dragger it will spawn skeletons so you want to just be careful of it now you can uh, use your your mace and uh, your stag breaker if you want things like that to actually destroy these spawners and then that will prevent further things from spawning there um, but you may uh, instead want to just like, like mark the location and then as you get better at the game and you've got better like armor and tools and stuff like that it can be a great place to come and farm the drops uh, if you need them oh my goodness there's a dragon behind us uh, if you need to farm the drops from you know dragger and skeletons and stuff like that now a couple other things you'll see in the swamp guys are ancient trees and also gut which is this green stuff on the trees so Basically, the guck there, if you go and mine those guck deposits, that's how you get guck. So if you can find like some that are low down like this, then you can sometimes just get to them while you're here. So if I use a pickaxe, maybe if I can stand up here, 
Did I just about get to that, right? If I hold on here, and you see these guck sacks here, and they drop guck, and there's the new build pieces we got from them. And you'll need those for different things uh, throughout the game. As for the ancient trees that you see, these can be chopped down uh, using your uh, bronze axe, and you'll get ancient bark from them. So that's how you can get ancient bark. But you'll also get ancient bark from a lot of the crypts. So I would say raid the crypts first, get all of the ancient bark from there first, and then if you need any more, that's when you start cutting down the ancient trees. Incidentally, when you see guck very high up on trees like this, um, basically the best way to do that is bring with you your wood and uh, your hammer and that sort of thing and you can build ladders up next to the tree so they're supported by the tree to uh, go up and get that stuff it's pretty uh, easy to do i'm not going to show that on cam but that is how you would do that all right guys i am very excited right now because i just found myself some turnip seeds and you definitely want to be on the lookout for these turnip seeds guys let's pick these up we have a new material now why am i so excited about some little seeds well it's not because i am in, you know insanely in love with turnips as such but uh basically this is going to allow us a couple of things First of all, a new food, right, with a turnip. They can be used in all kinds of recipes and things. But much bigger than that is uh, you need the turnip seeds to get the turnip and stuff in order that you can uh, make the upgrade, the first upgrade to your cauldron. Now, on my channel, I have a full uh, guide on the new cauldron upgrade since the Hearth and Home update. But safe to say, you basically need the turnip for the spice rack, which is the first upgrade you're going to do for your cauldron. We're going to look at that later on in today's episode, but definitely be on the lookout for turnip seeds in the swamp, guys. They are pretty rare. In fact, let me just get somewhere reasonably safe here i'll show you how much the swamp i've explored those are my first seeds so so yeah you might you know maybe i wasn't looking very hard um but still you definitely want to keep an eye out for those so here we have a leech in the water and in terms of ranging them you, know, you can see here you can just shoot them from here now they will eventually try to run away from you when you're shooting them like this uh that one actually didn't but they normally do so you do need to be a bit careful with that but as you can see when i'm doing this i've got really zero risk of taking any damage myself and i kill them pretty easily and go and get their drops so that's just another way of fighting them okay here we have a normal dragon guys and there's a couple ways we can fight these number one is to be quick on our toes let them swing at us and they're quite slow when they swing so if you sprint away you can get away from them and then you can like go back in and give them a hit like that but that's not the best way the best thing to do is to simply parry them when they attack you and then you can stagger them and do bigger damage hits so a couple of ways to fight them there of course you can also range them if you see them first uh, but the best thing to do as i say there just parry them and give them a good old hit so guys that covers just about everything you're going to find in the swamp in terms of the mobs and the structures and resources and all that sort of stuff so what we're going to do now is actually venture inside one of the crypts so i'm going to go through that whole process with you guys about how we get into the crypts and what to do when we're in there and all of that stuff. Okay, so as you can see on the map before, this is our portal down here and then the crypts are way up here. So it would be a bit of a run to and from and each time that you uh, need to repair your pickaxe, you're going to need to run to the portal to portal home and uh, repair that, of course, unless you make a whole like workstation area here. So that's one way you can do it. But if you are going to be portaling home, what you may want to do is move the portal. So you can, if you're feeling brave, just destroy all this stuff and then move it. Um, or if you want, you can be really safe. You can go back to your base set up a new portal and call it like swamp 2 or something and leave this one set up then go and make a new portal over like near the crypt area so we might make it over near here near the, where the new boats can be moved to and stuff like that um and then rename that obviously to the you know the swamp 2 and then we could get rid of this one afterwards to save the resources um so it's just kind of up to you how you want to do that but i, I do recommend you think about that because you are going to be needing to go back quite often uh in order to repair your pickaxe when we're mining the muddy scrap piles so back at base right now and if you're like me and you've got two portals the final option you have available to you is to simply rename one of these so i'll call this say swamp two just like that so now i can go and set up a new portal near the crypts now that i know exactly where they are from my recon mission stuff and if the worst comes to worst i can still portal back to my initial uh, swamp portal so what i've done is just got the materials here for the new portal and what i'm going to do is just sail my boat around because we're going to need to do that at some point anyway so i'm going to sail it around to that location that i marked out earlier and uh, basically once we dock up there we'll have our boat and our portal near to each other okay guys as you can see my portal has been placed down and it has also been uh, named and so now I'm just building this little wooden thing around it to protect it up a little bit. So hopefully we've got enough wood here to then finalize that with a door. And boom, there we go. So our boat's just stopped here, our portal's here, and this, uh, if I just go in here a second, uh, it's a little bit tricky to get in here, actually, the way I've done this. There we go. I've made it very small just to show you that you don't need to make it too big. Uh, but if we put that there, that's not like right on top of the crypts, but it's certainly a lot closer than it was before. It's going to make our life a lot easier for the future raid. So back at base, I've just been doing a few uh, final preparations before we go off in order to raid these crypts. So a couple of things to note. You might want to take materials with you to make a fireplace. I'll show you why that is when we get to a crypt. Uh, I've got my mead tea. You definitely want poison mead. And I've got myself some healing mead because if I get into trouble, then at least I can take one of these and 
not die. So that's why I prioritize that over stamina. But you can, of course, take both or just one, depending on whichever you want. Um, all the other stuff we've mentioned before, apart from a couple of things, one being the stag breaker, which is going to be useful for clearing rooms and destroying the dragler spawners inside those crypts. Um, and also, uh, I've taken an axe with me because you want to get some ancient bark. Again, we're going to come on to this in a little bit. And the final thing is uh, to go and get yourself uh, your swamp key, right? So we definitely want to make sure we got our swamp key. But we don't take this until now because I wanted to make sure I've got my portal set up and I know where the crypts are when I head towards them. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my items equipped and press R so they're on my back and ready to be uh, you know quickly equipped. I've got my rested buff. It's pretty good. I could get it higher if I wanted to. Um, but you know I just slept. It's it's daytime, so that's good. Got all my food on me. I'm going to head off and we're going to do some raiding of the crypts. I'm going to show you guys some tips on the best ways to do that. So as soon as I get to the swamp, I'm having my poison mead, so I'm ready to go. I'm going to eat my food. There we go. And I'm also going to use my Ikefer. So those are the first three things that I want to do. Now I'm heading straight for that first crypt. But I've got the best possible chance of uh, getting there, given all the stuff that I just did. And that's why I recommend that we do that. So this in front of us here is a crypt. It's not uncommon to see some mobs outside. You see we've got some skeletons here. Uh, you will find that quite a lot. There'll be uh, some sort of mobs outside. I'm realizing I'm actually fighting them with my fist right now. I thought it wasn't doing much damage. But you'll see here the mace does a good amount of damage to the skeletons as they are weak to blunt. So there we go. We've gone ahead and killed all those. And this is what it looks like from the front. So these green lights make it easy-ish to find. And uh, there we go. We've got up here. We can open the gate using the swamp key and head inside. So once inside, guys, this right here, this ledge, this is your favorite ledge in Valheim from here on out because this is your safe little area. From up here, if there are any drag around, and sometimes there are, if I try and look around the corner there... Can't see any here, but they can often be in this little lobby area. Well, we can jump up here and we are safe from their attacks. I will demonstrate that in a moment. Incidentally, the reason we brought the uh, mirror materials to make a fireplace is we can make a little fireplace here. So we can come back here and sit by the fire if we want to. We can dry off and get our rested buff back. This can be very useful when you're going through crypts, especially if you're new to the game, because sometimes the dragger can be very tricky, guys. So as you can see, when you're stood up here, if the dragger tries to get you, uh, you can just stand back and he destroyed the poles. <laughs> but yeah, you can just kind of step back. You can also, of course, when you hear, uh, stagger him like that and then get some hits on him as well. And of course, you could use your bow and just stand really far back to be pretty safe. So yeah, this is a nice safe area within the uh, you know, opening bit of the crypt and uh, one you want to maximize, especially when you're going for the first time and you don't have any of the better gear like the iron uh, armor and weapons and stuff. So that's more about setting up for you know later on in the game. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, mace and my shield and let's have a little look through. So we do want to go left, but we do want to make sure as well yeah, we're just checking here. Okay, so there's no dragger in there. You don't want to be heading this way and then have one sneak up behind you, right? So just make sure all around here that everything looks good. And this is a really nice lobby area. Oh, in fact, this is fantastic. So I was hoping I'd find all these. This is how you find the bone mass location. One of the biggest goals about raiding the crypts. Let's go ahead and press E. And oh my goodness, he's quite far away from us, isn't he? Compared to our uh, starting island. But that's okay. We found his location, so we're happy with that. So this is one of the big things you're looking for when raiding crypts. Um, in terms of these things, with the bones, you will need these to spawn in bone mass. I believe it's seven, but I'm going to make sure I put the right amount on screen for you guys right now when I do the editing. Um, and then you'll find other stuff, right? So we've got here rubies. We've got over here some amber, very good. And in the chest right here, ah, oh, we didn't find any. Okay, we got, sometimes you get the muddy scraps in the chest. We've got some other stuff. So the muddy scraps, the most common way you'll get them is these things here, muddy scrap piles. You just want to go ahead and mine away at these. And it takes a bit of mining to get through all of the pile. But um, when you do get uh, a bit of luck, and it is a chance drop, it's not 100%, you will pick up some scrap. So let me just show you that in a second. And there we go. Scrap iron has been picked up. So this is what scrap iron looks like. You can see it cannot be teleported, which is why we need the boat. So we're going to go ahead and get as much of that as we can carry and load our boat up fully, our carve up fully, as well as loading our inventory up fully with everything we can carry with the iron before we head home. Now, when mining through here, what I recommend you do, guys, is mine to one side of the muddy scrap piles. See, I'm just doing the right-hand side here. And what we're going to do is do that until we can sneak a little peek through to see what is in the room behind this and i'll show you why we do that in just a sec okay so when you've made a bit of a gap here on one side you'll see that i'm not able to get through but that means that mobs are not able to get through to me either so right now i can see there is a blob in there but he's gonna be stuck in there and we can just shoot him down and basically kill him uh before we go into that room if i can land my shots that is but yeah and just past that blob you see on the floor there there is a spawner just where i'm shooting now so a couple of things about that first of all uh the spawner will continue to spawn drag
harder until you destroy it. But as you can see, you can shoot your bow at it. I did 19 damage there, and I did another 19 there. So we can actually destroy the spawner before we go into the room. Boom, there we go. So what that means now is once these mobs are taken care of, so once this blob, for example, is killed, and I think there's a dragon in there. I think I heard one. Uh, but if not, just whatever mobs are in there, once we've killed them, we know we're safe to go in. So let me get rid of this blob, and then I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so with the mobs killed, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this uh, muddy scrap piles here. Just enough for us to actually get into the room, if we can do that. And then once I've got that done, I'll make sure I'm geared up in case there is something around this corner. Uh, but looks like looks like we're good. Okay, yes, we are good. So you can actually sort of clear the room before you even get into it. A very safe way of exploring it to uh, take that spawner out first. Now, inevitably, when you're exploring the crypts, you'll uh, start picking things up and you'll get to a point where you're carrying too much like I am here. So then you need to think about how you're going to store stuff. So what you might want to do is use the chest that you find and just store some of the heavier items in there that you can come back for and load up with, basically. Um, but there is going to be a lot of, like, toing and froing and uh, getting, uh, you know, all these different items because a lot of the stuff in here weighs a lot. I mean, all of these three things, the ancient bark, which incidentally we found so much of that we don't even need to do mining for it later to get the uh, uh, long chip, which is great. Uh, but that weighs a lot, as do the withered bones and the scrap iron. So all of that, you know... And that's before we even talk about all the other stuff we're holding. It is going to weigh a lot, and so you are going to need to think a little bit about the inventory space. Another thing you can do is just return to the entrance here each time and go ahead and just chuck stuff down on the floor and then come back and pick it up later on so that then each time you get a load of stuff, you basically place it down and lighten your inventory and you can come back and collect it because it won't respawn, uh, sorry, despawn for like a really, really long time. And you'll certainly have time to come back here and pick that up as and when you need it. So next, you'll need to start prioritizing what things you want to take back. And as you can see here, iron is really, really heavy. We're just 28 iron on us, we have too much to even walk with. So it can be a little tricky. Now you can, of course, make a cart and use that in the swamp, but it can be quite tricky to do. It just kind of depends on your terrain. Uh, and also, if you can be bothered, you can also like, hoe out a bit of an area from your... Um, like I guess from the crypt to the boat and that sort of thing. Um, other than that, you just have to do a lot of running back and forth, which is why I recommended that you do this recon mission and get the boat as close as you can to speed things up as best you can. So then I've gone ahead and come back to my boat and put all of the uh, scrap iron into the boat there. And of course, uh, each time that you go back to the boat when the portal is that close, it is an opportunity for you to actually just quickly pull back through and just repair up everything. And in particular, you're going to want to repair up that bronze pickaxe because you will start getting through that pretty quickly. Alrighty, guys. Well, now it is time to take back as much iron as we possibly can uh, via our boat so what i'm gonna do just throw down here anything i can carry so we're a little bit over the limit there let's put down maybe three of these okay that should be about right it doesn't need to be you know exact and i've also filled up my boat in all four slots with the iron so we're bringing back quite a lot of iron here uh let's uh, open that one up as you can see um so in terms of this boat trip home guys a few things i would recommend one be prepared that you might have to fight a serpent so do have uh, a good amount of arrows on you and obviously your bow and stuff like that just in case um, number two is if you didn't find a serpent on the way here then i recommend that you just go back the way you came just go back in the same direction um because there's less chance that you'll find one i've also slept so i'm heading off first thing in the morning that's also going to help me to not find any serpents because they are more likely at night they're also more likely in stormy weather but there's not a lot you can do about that so i'm going to go ahead and sail this back to base now and uh, from here we're going to be able to make some really cool stuff including a much better boat for future trips so i'll go over all that stuff with you guys as well later on let me just get myself back to base and uh, then we'll look into all of that okay so here we are guys we're back at our base and i've got the iron in my inventory so what i'm going to do is get to smelting this up straight away and of course once that's smelted you will get proper iron from these uh, scrap iron pieces that we are putting in and this is going to unlock all kinds of new recipes a couple of which we're going to talk about in just a second so we talked about the turnip earlier and i did go ahead and plant some of the seeds and so now we get to pick up the turnip um which is more exciting than you might think in fact these two are not ready yet that only that one <laughs> um but it does lead to a few things to talk about and probably the most important of those is is the cauldron upgrade that we now have available to us, being this right here, the spice rack. You see that it's going to require three turnips to do and those other things, but it does unlock this. So that's why we wanted to get those from the swamp. Now, as I said, I've got a full cauldron guide on my channel if you guys want to check that out, um, but that's basically what that unlocks. So let's go pick up some iron, and here comes like a ton of new recipes right now. And uh, one of the most exciting things that we've unlocked uh, through this whole process is the long ship. So in order to make the uh, long ship, what we first need to do, you'll see it's not here just yet, we need to make up some iron nails and we do that over here on the forge so here we go 10 iron nails for one iron so we go ahead and make that and this unlocks like a ton of new recipes which are still flooding the page as we speak uh, but as you can see uh, up here there is the long ship so we need to get 40 ancient bark for this of course you can uh, bring the bark back through the portal which we couldn't do with the iron that's why we prioritize the iron but once i go and get all of that stuff you'll see that we're able to portal all of this stuff including the iron nails 
back through. So what we can do when we've got ourselves some better iron gear to go mining with, if we want to get like an upgrade with a iron mace, iron shield, maybe iron armor, depending on what you like to do, and potentially an iron pickaxe as well to get even more iron in the future, then you can take all the materials back through the portal to make a long trip, and this will make your next journey over the sea to bring all your iron from your swamp back to your base much faster and also much safer. So that's what I recommend you do. And as I say, you've got the uh, cauldron upgrade as well. So good times all round with the iron journey. So a quick side note, guys. I was going to name the boar this episode, but you'll see this area is looking pretty empty in terms of boar. And this is why. <laughs> so... Yeah, clearly I let a Grayling or something get too close to here. And this is why you do need to protect them. I thought they'd be okay, but they're not. And um, yeah, so don't don't let this happen to your boar. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'll get the boar breeding done uh, in the future. All the names that you guys submitted in the last episode, they will still be uh, used. We'll, we'll make sure that we're naming all the boar. And thank you all for your suggestions and stuff. But yeah, just wanted to mention why that's not happened this episode. Apologies for that. We will name them in the future. So guys, the dad jokes are of course coming, but first I want to say today was of course a longer episode, but I wanted to give you guys all of the information that I felt was relevant, and there is a lot to talk about when it comes to the swamp. So for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. How do you get a female viking out of the swamp? Dragger. What do you call it when too many animals move into Shrek swamp? Ogre populated. What did the toad dress up as for Halloween? Roggenstein. Where do people go when they have two broken legs? Nowhere. Why didn't the moon want any more food? It was full. What did the policeman say to his belly? You're under a vest.